Welcome to this CUBE conversation. I'm Lisa Martin. Today, we're going to be talking about cyber protection and recovery solutions for unstructured data. I have two guests joining me. Andrew McKay is here, the president of Superna, and Parasar Kodati, senior consultant, ISG product marketing at Dell Technologies. Guys, great to have you on the program talking about cybersecurity, cyber resiliency, something that we've heard a lot of the new in the news in the last 18 months or so. Parasar, let's go ahead and start with you. Talk to us about what you're seeing from a cybersecurity perspective, some of the challenges in the last 18 months or so, and then tell us what Dell is doing specifically to really infuse its storage solutions to enable customers to have that cyber resiliency that they need. Sure, Lisa. So today there's no question that cyber attacks have become a serious threat for business operations, for organizations of all sizes uh, across all industries, right? And if you look at the consequences, you know, there is a huge financial impact, of course, uh, through the, you know, like 70% of the cyber attacks when they are financially motivated, you know, look at the, you know, the ransom part, which is a big financial impact in itself, but look at the lost revenue from disrupted operations, uh, legal expenses, um, and, and uh, sometimes regulatory fines and so on add up uh, to the financial impact. And if you look at the data theft or data loss that is involved, you know, data being such a critical asset for organizations, think about losing customer data or losing access to uh, customer data or critical applications that depend on customer data. Um, similarly, data related to your business operations, data that is source of your competitive advantage, um, data that could be you know, very confidential information uh, as well. So, um, and, and when it comes to you know, government organization institutions, there is also um, the issue of national security and the need to protect critical infrastructure that depend on these IT systems as well. So absolutely, um, uh, it is uh, becoming an imperative for IT organizations to, uh, to improve the cyber resiliency, to boost the cyber resiliency of the organization. Um, at Dell Technologies, for the storage products that we offer, uh, we have integrated uh, solutions to protect the data um, in terms of detecting patterns of data access to detect the cyber attacks in advance to kind of put IT a step ahead of, of these attackers and also have the tools and technologies to recover from a cyber attack rapidly and so that the business can continue to run. That recovery is absolutely critical. It's one thing, right, to, to have all this data, customer data, PII, competitive advantage data, but you have to be able to recover it because as you said, you know, we've seen this now become a, a matter of national security, um, infrastructure being threatened. The ransomware rise we saw, have seen in the last 18 months has been unprecedented. I want to talk now, Andrew, about Superna. Talk to us about what you guys do and how you're a partner with Dell Technologies in helping customers recover and really be cyber resilient. Yeah, we've, we've been uh, working with Dell for years. Um, in fact, our products are uh, built and targeting the Isilon PowerScale platform. So we're a very closely, tightly integrated solution uh, that focuses on solving one problem and solving it really well. Talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing specifically with um, the Dell technology storage solutions to help customers in any industry be able to recover. As we know now, ransomware is not a I, if it happens to us, it's a when. Give us a little bit more of a dissection of those solutions. So when we looked at this problem, um, you know, it's associated with files, right? But today there's files and objects, objects another type of unstructured data. So we've built a solution that addresses both file and object. But one of the areas that we think is important for customers to consider is the, uh, the framework that they choose, right? It, they shouldn't just jump in and start looking for products. They should step back and take a look at what frameworks exist. For instance, the NIST framework that guides them in how they uh, build and tick off all the, the key boxes on how to build a cyber resilient solution. So for companies that are, are using traditional legacy tools, backup and restore, how is what Superna enables, how is it different? So the, the, the buzzword these days is, is zero trust. So I'm going to use the buzzword. So we use a zero trust model, but really that comes down to being proactive. And I consider a backup restore a bit of a legacy approach. That's just restore the data after you've been attacked. So we think you should get in front of the problem and don't trust any of the access to the storage and try to take care of the problem at the source, which means detection patterns, um, locking users out of the file system, reacting in real time to real time IO that's being processed by a storage device. 
Got it. Purser, let's talk now about unstructured data specifically and why does it need protection against the attacks? Traditionally, structured data or the enterprise databases have been uh, the more critical data to protect, but more and more unstructured data is also becoming a source of competitive differentiation for customers. Um, you know, think about artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, internet of things, uh, a lot of edge computing, and a lot of this data is actually being stored on highly scalable NAS platforms like Dell EMC PowerScale. And this is where um, you know, given the volume of the data involved, we, we actually have a unique solution for unstructured data to protect it uh, from cyber, cyber attacks and also having the recovery mechanisms in place. Um, so most of the audience might have already heard about the Power Protect cyber recovery solution. Um, uh, but for unstructured data, we have uh, something unique in the industry uh, in terms of uh, rapid recovery of large amount of data um, within a few hours uh, for a business to be up and running in, in the in the attack in the event of a cyber attack. So when it comes to uh, the data protection technologies on the power scale platform, you know we have you know starting from the operating system, the OneFS uh, already has a great foundation in terms of access control, separate access zones that can be protected. And you know uh, these things work across multiple protocols, which is uh, really um, a key thing about how this uh, technology works in terms of access control. Uh, but you know, thanks to the great uh, technology that Andrew and his team is building, the ransomware defender, um, real-time access auditing, these um, products form the core um, kind of cyber resiliency um, framework um, when it comes to unstructured data on power scale platforms. Got it. Andrew, let's talk about the, that NIST framework. I, as we've talked about in the last few minutes, cybersecurity has be, has really become a, quite a business, unfortunately. In the last 18 months, we've seen huge um, X full increases in ransomware attacks of, of any type of company. Talk to me about how, where are those conversations? Are you having conversations at the board level, at the C level in terms of, of the right cyber resiliency framework that organizations need to put in place? Yeah, we, we talk with customers almost daily. It's a, it's a daily conversation we have with customers about um, the, the requirements. And, and if you the, the, the frameworks offer, the NIST one especially offers all the key requirements from detection uh, to prevention to recovery. And if you look at all of those requirements, you, you may end up with multiple products. And so we've built a solution that can address all of the key requirements in a single product. So for example, I mentioned detection and, and mitigation and recovery. Well, that's that's our protect the data at the source strategy, but the number one recommendation these days is to have an offline copy of your data. And that requires a cyber vault solution where you're now going to take a copy of your data, place it in an offline storage device, and you're going to manage that through some sort of automation we've married those two requirements into a single product. So we actually look at the whole framework and can comply with all aspects of that, including the offline component. And that's one of the sort of secret sauce part of our solution is that we can both protect at the source and maintain and monitor the offline copy of the data as well at the same time. So, so the offline copy, interesting. Talk to me about how frequently is that updated so that if, if a business has to go back and, and restore and recover, they can. What's that time frame of how frequently that's updated? So we generally we recommend about 24 hours because in reality, it's going to take time to uncover that there's something seriously wrong with your production data. In the case of our solution, the hope and intent is that really the, the problem is addressed right at the source, meaning we've detected ransomware on the source data and we can protect it and stop it before it actually ends up in your cyber vault. That's really the, the, the key to our solution. But if you have that day recovery with the Isilon PowerScale snapshotting features, you can revert petabytes of data and bring it online in a worst case scenario. And we tell customers, you need to work backwards from what is the worst case. And if you do that, you're going to realize that what you need is petabyte scale data recovery with your offline data. And that's a very hard problem to solve that we think we've solved really well with the power scale. And Andrew, sticking with you for a second, in the last year and a half since things have been so turbulent, have you seen any industries in particular um, that have come to you saying, we really need to get ahead of this, this challenging situation as we've seen attacks across infrastructure. I mean, you name it, we've seen it. 
Yeah, the number one um, vertical for sure is healthcare. Healthcare has been the target. In fact, it was you know, last October, I think the FBI um, made an announcement to all health, healthcare organizations to improve their cybersecurity. Um, that's probably our largest vertical, but there really isn't a vertical that, that doesn't feel the need to do something more than they are today. Um, you know, finance, of course, um, manufacturing, um, retail, Basically, there's no target that isn't a target these days, um, but I would say for sure it's going to be healthcare because they, they have a willingness and a need to have their data online all the time. Right, and it's absolutely such critical information. Purser, back to you. I'm curious to understand maybe any joint customers that you guys are working together with and how they have, you know, what are some of the recovery time and the recovery point objectives that you're able to help them achieve? Sure, Lisa. So with rats of a Defender, for example, there are more than 1,000 uh, customers have, uh, almost 1,000, we are we're very close. I think it, the exact number is around 970 or something, but um, have adopted uh, this set of tools um, for to boost their cyber resiliency uh, in terms of you know being able to detect these uh, attack patterns um, or any indications of a compromise through, you know, the way data is being accessed uh, or, um, you know, the kinds of users that are accessing the data um, and so on. Um, but also when it comes to isolation of the data, um, that has also been a lot of interest for customers to be able to have this cyber ward, which is air gapped from your primary infrastructure. Um, and of course, which is regulated with a lot of intelligence in terms of looking for any flags uh, to, to uh, close the connection and continue to replicate data or to terminate the connection and keep the um, cyber ward secure. Um, so absolutely. Andrew, how do you guys help? Is it, first of all, is it possible for companies to be able to stay ahead of the attackers? The attackers are also taking advantage of the emerging technologies that, that businesses are, but how do you, if the answer is yes, how do you help companies stay ahead of those attackers? Uh, I think a prime example of that is if you look at ransomware today and, and there's you know, publicized versions or variants or names of it, and they all attack files. But the, the, the bad actors are looking for the weak link. They're always looking for the weak link to go after the corporate data. And so the new frontier is object storage because th these types of systems are compliance data. It's frequently used to store backup data. And that is a prime target for, for attackers. And so the security tools and the maturity of the technology to protect object data is nowhere near what's in place for trial data. So we've announced and released the ability to protect object data in real time, the same way we've already done it for years for file data, because we understand that that's just the next target. And so we, we're offering that type of solution in a, in a unified single product. And then last question, Parasa, for you, where can folks go to learn more about this joint solution and how can they get started with it? Sure, Lisa, telltechnologies.com slash power scale. Um, that's the unstructured uh, data platform for, for or the scale out NAS platform from Dell Technologies. Uh, and we have, uh, uh, you know, great content there to educate customers about uh, the, the nature of these uh, cyber attacks and what kind of data is at risk and what is the kind of steps they can take um, to the point that Andrew mentioned um, to, to build a cyber resi resiliency strategy, as well as how to use these tools effectively to protect against attacks and, and, and also be um, very agile when it comes to recovery. Right, that agility with respect to recovery is critical because as we know, the, the trends are that we're only going to see cybersecurity um, and, and risks and attacks increase. And so businesses in every industry are vulnerable and really need to put in place the right types of strategies and solutions to be able to recover when something happens. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. This is such an interesting topic. Great to hear about the partnership with Superna and Dell Technologies. And I'm sure your joint customers are very appreciative of the work that you're doing together. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, great, thank you. For my guests, I'm Lisa Martin and you're watching a CUBE Conversation.